All right, well, this is the steepest hill. So we're at 60% battery right now. Uh, we've gone about six miles. It started at about four. So we got plenty of power. Let's see how it handles this, this hill. It's a long, steep hill up on the other side. Well, that's where we came from. Just a little bit of the hill left, but nothing compared to what we just went up. Did use a bit of battery though. Well, we made it. And it looks like we are at about 50% battery life. So now I was going back and forth for some, uh, some filming. So we technically could make it here and back on one battery. But plenty of power to make it up those hills and plenty of battery life to get to work. So we're, we're building a new building here at church. I'll take you guys in uh, and, and show you the whole thing sometime. But uh, it's right across the street from the current building, and so it's the same distance uh, that I have to, to drive in to, to work. But with gas prices the way they are, all these trips back and forth, they add up. And I think we added it up at the gas prices currently. It was about 4 or $5 a day for gas. So think about that. Add that up over the week. How many days that are nice like this in the summertime that I could drive this thing in. I think we could save quite a bit of money and we'll charge it with our solar charging station, our solar generator, which I'll show you guys that when we get back home. All right, it's been here for a couple hours charging. Let's see where it's at. 100%. So it actually has a, uh, a phone holder right here um, that you can actually, it's you can touch through this. It's great. Um, when it was real sunny, I couldn't really see anything at it anyway, but I, you can use my AirPods and, and listen to something while I'm riding, which is nice. And it also has a little spot on the back here where you could strap things. I'm sure we could put larger things or maybe make a case or something that's strapped on here. I have my tripod on here. And unfortunately, because of all the bumps, the handle that goes on the tripod here rattled out somewhere on the road. So we're gonna see if we can find that on the way home. And this also broke, I'm not sure why. So we'll throw the charger in my backpack, jump on, and head home. Home sweet home. Plug back into the solar generator, have it charged up for morning. So did another video on the solar generator. That's a whole nother thing uh, that I put together, which is absolutely amazing for down here away from the house for powering tools and other things when, when I'm down around uh, working around the gardens or in the wood pile or anything like that. But it's also a great spot to charge the e-bike so we can actually charge it from the sun. So this charges up all day, charges the, uh, the, the battery inverter there, and then it stores the, stores the charge. I also have a cooler down here that's running off of it. But So the bike will get me to work and back um, on one charge, it looks like. I didn't test that out uh, today, but uh, when, I, when I turned it back on, it said it was at about 50%, but it looks like it actually, um, the battery fluctuates a little bit. When you're running it, it, lower, it, it registers a little lower, and then when you stop for a few seconds, you know, it, it kind of jumps back up as batteries tend to do. So I probably could squeeze a whole round trip to work and back uh, on one battery. So the display here, so I'm at 56% is what it's standing at right now. Um, this is a 900 watt uh, power, and so obviously it's just sitting idle right now. It tells you the, uh, the speed you're going. So the total uh, trip that I have, I, I, this was at zero when I, when I got it. So I've ridden it about 18 and a half miles. The trip to work is about seven miles, so it's about a 14 mile round trip. So up all those hills and with my body weight, about 180 pounds on this thing, that's what it took and that's uh, how much battery power it took. And that's running it at about 26 miles per hour almost the entire way. And that's without pedaling one single time. I never pedaled at all, never broke a sweat. Uh, just, just held the throttle to the full and, and just kept going. That was also with me filming a little bit. So I actually had to set the camera up, film and come back. 
So this is a MagiCycle, it's a 52 volt. This is the, the battery right here. Um, it actually locks, there's a key that uh, comes with it. It has a few other accessories I didn't put on it. It has a bike lock, it comes with a bike lock. Um, you can actually remove the battery when you're inside and take it inside and charge it in an office or something like that and then bring it right back out. So this, this whole piece right here disconnects, which is pretty nice. It comes with the, the phone holder. And this has not only a spot for your phone here, but it also has a spot underneath it where you can fit accessories, your phone charger and other items. So that's pretty handy. Uh, it has a couple, has a bell, very important. Uh, it actually is a seven speed it looks like. So if you're just running it as a regular bike, um, it shifts pretty easily. I did test that out the other day and uh, you can run through those gears uh, and, and pedal away. Um, it has a display on it that uh, has a bunch of different features. So it has a couple different modes. By default, when you turn it on, it has this pedal assist level one. So that means when you start pedaling, it, it, the electric motor kicks in, it gives you a little bit of assist. You can turn that all the way up to seven. It looks like that's the max assist, or you can turn it to zero. I turn it to zero and I just use the throttle. I'm not gonna turn it now because it'll go. Um, this is the throttle right here. And uh, that you can just use that as just like a driving a motorcycle or something. So it uses what I think is called a hub motor. I'm not sure. It has these nice fat tires on it. Uh, the whole thing has tons of power. Um, it, it's just an, it's just a pretty smooth little deal. So it does have front sus piston suspension. Um, it's got like a, like a disc brake on it pretty much is what it reminds me of anyway. It looks like a disc brake on a car. The brakes seem to work pretty good. Um, I never had problems with them, even going down those steep hills. I mean, I was able to stop just fine when I needed to. So there was another reviewer out there on YouTube that said something about the brakes not being good. I, I didn't notice that at all. I was able to, I, I hammered on the brakes a couple times and it came to a stop in a reasonable amount of time or space or whatever so i think that's fine so one of the things that uh, prompted me to get this bike was I, I started adding up the cost of fuel as i said earlier and uh, with gas prices up over four i think they're 435 right now in 2022 uh you know it, <laughs> you had that up i was driving a suburban uh, i'm driving a suburban or a, or a avalanche a pickup truck so if you think about that i'm generally just transporting myself and maybe a couple small items, a lunch, uh, a water bottle, you know, a laptop. That's all I'm really care. I'm using a, you know, a, a five ton vehicle, a V8 engine to transport me back and forth uh, seven miles. You know, it seems kind of ridiculous when you think about all the fuel and, and, and energy and cost that's into maintaining that vehicle and, and paying for fuel and all that to transport all that, you, to use all that power and all that, you know, ability to just drive me back and forth so this this seemed like an actually a, a really good option to get back and forth to work on nice days i'm not going to ride this when it's raining i'm not going to ride this in the winter time but when there's nice days why not hop on and use this instead of putting miles on a vehicle it makes complete sense reasonably i think you could drive this thing you could count on a, a 15 mile trip I, I think that that's reasonable um, to run this thing 50 miles, uh, guy my weight, you know, in, in rough conditions. Could probably get a little more than that, uh, maybe a little less if you're in worse conditions, but I think 50 miles is pretty reasonable. You could also strap extra battery on here. You could do all kinds of other things if you wanted to go further than that. So uh, lots of options to, uh, to get you around uh, or just run up to the store and do little trips like that. You can use this on nice days. So I did take this out at night the other night. It does have a headlight on it, which is sufficient. It was good and bright. And it also has a uh, tail light on it, which is also lit up. So just a quick video update today on how I am beating the gas prices. Uh, they're expected to, to go even higher possibly this year. Uh, man, I can't imagine paying over 450 a gallon or something. That's crazy. Anything I can do to, to beat those prices and to, to save a little bit of money, I'll do it. So check out the MagiCycle, the uh, the e-bike. I'll put a link in the description and I'll probably throw a comment in there as well. So you guys can check this out at their site. Um, they actually are way more affordable than I expected when I was looking at these things. Uh, they used to be a lot more than they are now. And so you can get a pretty good one. And this is a good one. Uh, you can get these for a pretty affordable price for what it is. So check those things out. Let me know what you guys think. Is this the solution? Is this a way to beat the, beat the gas prices? How are you beating the gas prices? What do you think of the, the whole electric movement? You think it's, uh, it's worthwhile? Love to hear from you guys. Throw your comments down below. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Subscribe if it's your first time here. Love to have you tag along. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.